I'd like to call the Westmont Village Board meeting of June 8, 2017 to order at uh, 6.05 p.m. and ask Clerk Simsky for a roll call, please. Mayor Dunn. Here. The clerk's here. Trustee Addington. Here. Trustee Barker. Here. Trustee Barry. Here. Trustee Guzzo. Here. Trustee Little. Here. Trustee Nero. Here. Manager May. Here. Attorney Zemanek. Here. Can I ask everybody to please rise and join me in a pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome. The first uh, item on the agenda, of course, is open forum. Uh, if anybody's here to talk about any item that's not on the agenda, now's the time to raise your hand and do it. If not, I will close open forum and then move on to uh, reports. And I'd like to call uh, Mike Ramsey uh, up to the podium. Uh, we're going to be starting our alley reconstruction project for this year, and I, he's got some important information. Thank you, Mayor. I don't know if I can get this to work or not. We'll see. Here. I don't know if they can get it on the screen or not. We'll see. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, Mayor. Um, yeah, what's going to be going to happen on? Obviously, you guys are all aware we're going to be starting our CBD uh, alley construction project, um, Section F, which is between um, basically Chicago Avenue and Norfolk Avenue behind Manning School. And uh, one of the problems that we've we, we had an open meeting for some of the residents to come out and talk to us. And one of the things that came up in that meeting was um, a parking issue for 227 North Cass. Um, it's an apartment uh, complex just north of Dilworth uh, Window and Glass Company. Um, the problem they're having is they have, the only access they have is to the alley. They have no access to Cass Avenue. So once we start the construction of tearing up the alley, they have no way to get in and out with a vehicle uh, because there's gonna be no traffic going through the alley at all. So we had to come up with an idea. So I came up with an idea to talk to the business owner uh, across the street from them at 218, 222 North Cass. It's a vacant, uh, currently vacant little strip mall, three units, and asked him if he'd be open to the idea of us renting six parking stalls for these residents. So they have somewhere to park their vehicle and they can still get out. I mean, it's almost directly across from where their current uh, apartment complex is. Um, I talked to the owner, he's open to the idea. Um, worked out and negotiated a price um, pretty closely to what we charge what our commuters pay currently. Um, we'd like to have it rent for three months, uh, six dollars for the, for the next three months, basically from um, June 15th to September 15th. Because um, by September 15th, if, if the weather permitting, we should be done with the project. Also, school will be back in session, and so we kind of need to be done by then anyway, at least uh, substantially completed by then. So I'm, I'm here asking you tonight if it's okay to, to have a leasing agreement with this gentleman that owns the property at 218, 222 for these residents at this apartment to, so we don't inundate them with any kind of inconvenience during this whole project. Uh, also during Taste of Westmont, um, they, you know, Cass Avenue is also shut down, so this will still give them an opportunity to have access to their vehicle and still be able to get in, in and out yeah. uh, from this uh, location at 218. Pardon? Residential type areas, we would make some hour, we just let people park on the street overnight. And one, right. I, I don't know that we'd want to do this on Cass Avenue in the business district anyway, but right. then throw in Taste of Westmont and they, they physically have no option. So the, the thought is making it just part of the cost of the construction project. Steve, with the exception of Taste of Westmont, why wouldn't we just use our public parking that's <laughs> a door away for free? I mean, we have a whole open parking lot that is not used during the summer for Manning that's actually on the same side of the street. Why would we rent when we already own that? Well, that parking lot, too, is kind of on the same alley that's, you know, well, construction. But it has an entrance off of Cass. It has an entrance off Cass and the exits, you know, in the alley. I mean, I was part of the thinking was just to separate them as far as possible from the construction that's displacing them already. I mean, it's a good point, but I mean, they got to go to their door, which is going to be is it, you know, if you know that building, the door is on the side, it's not on the front. So I mean, they're going to be, in theory, closer when they go to their residency to the construction than they are, parking at the public parking garage. Right. 
I mean, again, I'm just trying to save money. I mean, I, it's, it's whatever. It could be potentially more shirts. Were you going to close that lot? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, would, it would be about the same distance. I mean, for what Trustee, Barry, or Trust, Trustee Barker is saying, it's about the same Lock distance. crossing. I mean, so that's a lot on, on the same side of the street. Yeah, it's on the same side of the street. But the, the problem is with the construction there, uh, a lot of the construction is probably going to stage some stuff there. in that parking lot while, while they're doing the work. So I want to make sure that they have access away from the construction com site completely, it, just in case something like that comes up. Um, you know, and then you know, with with Taste of Westmont, they're going to start staging earlier that week. So that whole week, I'm sorry, the whole week before Taste of Westmont, the vendors come in and take over that parking lot. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why we thought try to get them as close to their apartment complex, but away from where the construction is. So that's that was our thinking, but I mean it's a very good point. I mean it's a valid point. And that lot's no good for Taste of Westmont either because that's Beer Garden. That's, right, but we worked out in the behind there. If you see in this picture here, there's a gravel area. That's where they'll park, which not actually in the parking stalls, but those, just for those four days they'll park in that gravel area. That was also brought up as a very good point too that they can't park in those stalls because the beer tent will be there. So what was the cost on the rental for for that? Um, it, it's it's fifty dollars per month per stall. So it's $900 total for the three months. So $300 a month for the six spots. There's currently right now, they have six vehicles in the, so all six spots would take care of those six vehicles. So it's, a, it's a four unit apartment, but a couple of them have more than one vehicle, so. If you're in that favor of this, this would be on the next agenda for approval of the lease agreement. And I think what staff is looking at, because the project may actually start and the potential displacement before the next meeting, June 22nd, uh, approval to sign off on the lease agreement and present it to you retroactively uh, a little. It appears to me that project has started, right? Uh, it, 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 that NICOR has been doing, working in, doing work in there. The actual stormwater project has not started, but NICOR has already been in there. We notified them back in January that we were doing this project, and they dragged their feet until now to start the project. NICOR said they should be done, weather permitted, they should be done on Friday, June 16th. So the stormwater project should start on Monday, June 19th. Okay. Everything goes. Because the, there's a heavy duty tractor, as you're probably well. Right, right. That, yeah, that's, that's, that's all NICOR. That's not us. See. Yeah, NICOR is doing their work, which is good. I'm glad they're getting in there before we start because we don't want them coming in after the and, fact. So. And it, it appeared to me that they were using that, that vacant lot there in between uh, Oakwood Electric and, and that guy with all the fancy cars, as I know him. Yes. You know, yeah. uh, it, it seemed like that that area was being used as a, as a staging equipment area. I don't know if that was part of our plan or not. It, it, I, I understand it's private property there. That's but. private property. That was something that NICOR got, got a little bit in trouble for that, too, because okay. they weren't supposed to be staging stuff there. Um, that They had nothing worked out with us. We had to go tell them to move their stuff. They had, actually had a porta potty there, and they had something else there, and they weren't supposed to have either one of those things in that lot. They just assumed it was the village's property, and it was. we had okay. explained explain to them it was not a village okay. property. What, so. are, what are you with this alley? Is the alley going to be turned up? completely all the way up and down uh, all the way once what's happening to nature's best uh they still have access off of neighborhood will they road. be able to get their trucks in for because i know the delivery is going to be the delivery is going to be difficult and they're aware of it so they're going to have to back in and they're going to have to do some maneuvering okay. there, there's a if you look at nature's best they have a little bit of a space between the alley and their building mm -hmm. so they're going to have to bring stuff in that way but they will not be able to park in the alley at all okay. unfortunately so but again you know as you've seen with the section a and section b yeah. once the project is done uh, everybody's pretty happy with the, the final product so we, we you know they understand that they're gonna be inconvenienced for two months but uh, you know if they can hopefully if, if you know everything goes really well we'll get done with it soon and get back to normal business as usual I think as we experienced with here our, our renters are are the highest maintenance to to satisfy it seems like because they don't get communication from the landlord that we communicate yep. and so forth so sometimes Correct. they're they're the last one. well that tells us we're Good bargain at thirty-five dollars a month for our commuter spot, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. That is correct. Well, right. I think you, I think you made a better decision. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand what Harold is saying about that lot, but that's if there are a lot of cars <coughs> because of the angle. I think using <coughs> in and out of that same driveway it, it would be difficult. Yeah. So, um, and I appreciate the fact that it's ours and they could do it for free except for the right. the week of the taste it's still I think it's still a problem getting in and out of there easily so I'm gonna go check it out tomorrow yeah I'm gonna have right. to see how hard it is to get in and out of that parking lot I don't know I never had a problem getting in and out of that parking lot I, but do it do it when cars are parked at an angle and then 
back out the wrong way and then figure out how you're going to turn your car around to pull out of gas. Yeah. Most of the time I'm there is when Manning's involved or, or it's a, a function where it's really full. Okay, okay. so I mean, I, I don't think I've ever used the alley uh, exit. I didn't even realize it was an exit and entrance. There, there, there is. There is one way in and one way out. And Sorry, uh, Chief. I did that wrong. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, any more questions? No. Uh, thanks, Mike. Uh, thank you. And I also like to call Larry McIntyre. Is he here? Here he comes. He, Here he comes. To, to give us an update on our sister city program and the 100th anniversary committee meeting that we held. Thank you very much, Mayor, Village Board. Uh, first, I'll talk about 100th anniversary committee. Uh, we met a couple weeks ago and uh, talked about what we have coming up for uh, this year, which is our 96th anniversary. And we have lots of plans. Um, Real soon, we hope to have an update on our historical mural, uh, which this year we'll be doing phase two of a five-part project. In addition, uh, we're continuing our historical videos and a historical essay contest, and all of that will culminate uh, for later this year for our 96th anniversary, November 10th. And then uh, the next item. Did any um, artists uh, indicate their interest in doing phase two? We, we did have uh, several people um, uh, submit you know their interest, and uh, and then we're talking with them, and we'll be announcing that direction real soon. You've got you've got some options. We do. Good. Thank you. And then um, the next item is regarding our sister city program. Um, we're in close uh, communication with Shinshu County. That's our uh, sister city partner in Taiwan, and we just found out earlier this week that unfortunately uh, the governor of Shinshu County had to go uh, have a uh, surgical procedure. And so uh, they've had to uh, cancel their uh, current trip to the United States and to Westmont. And so it's postponed and uh, we're in the process of talking with them to reschedule. But all of the ceremonies that we had been planning for July 4th are canceled, um, but we'll keep people abreast of uh, updates as they come forth. Thank you. Thank you. And at this point, um, I've got some service awards I'd like to present. Those are always fun. For service, like the service to the village. And <clears throat> All right, I'd like to, one of them is our own clerk, Benny Simsky. Yeah, Benny. If you want to come up here, I'd present you with. The Village of Westmont honors uh, Virginia Simsky, village clerk, member of the village's administration department from 1997 to 2017 in its recognition of your 20 years of dedicated service to the community. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we get a picture. Of that. <laughs> Except I would take it out of the box, right? <laughs> Another 20 year service award, Deputy Chief Stephen Riley, who's a yeah. yeah. uh, Again, 1997, 2017, and again, it's a recognition of his 20 years of dedicated service to this community. And here you go. All right. I'll take the sticky off of there. <laughs> All right, thank you, congratulations. <laughs> Now we've got a 25-year uh, recognition to Kathy Crane. Yay, there Kathy. she is. Yeah. Yeah. And Kathy is our human resource director, and she's been a member of the administration department for those 25 years, and this is in recognition of all those years of service. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. I'm not bending my knee. I'm not <laughs> I always think I'm okay. Again, congratulations. And um, at this point, I'll move on to Clerk Simsky. Um, I have a couple of items. First of all, yesterday we had a team, no, Tuesday afternoon, we had a team from the high school, it was a science team that competed, sophomores that competed in a statewide contest 
for coming up with solutions to certain problems. Five teams were selected from the state of Illinois, and, and there weren't class separations. They were all, this sophomore group that came before us was selected to go to the national competition in Florida, and they were, you know, trying to raise money to make this trip. I was just amazed that, you know, these, this is their only second year of doing this, and that this young group of sophomores beat out the upperclassmen and are going to this marvelous competition. And there are only five teams from the state of Illinois selected. So, like I said, no class separations. They were up against Naperville, all the big schools, and they were one of the top five. I, I'm so proud of them, and I just wanted to make sure you all were aware of it, because they go June 22nd or something like that. So it's a hurry up and Rotary did give them money for this trip, so good. Um, secondly, um, what was I gonna bring? Oh, if you're watching this, <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't. Get out of your house and go down to the Cruise and Night Street Fair. Come on, people. It's a grand time and it's a beautiful night. Don't be watching TV. Go out on the street and <laughs> see your neighbors, see your friends, see everyone. Buy um, raffle tickets. Buy, right, <laughs> buy spit the pot raffle tickets so we can give more money. So, and thirdly, um, the garage sales will be coming up the community-wide in August. There will be information up on the website soon, so just keep your eyes open, but it will be taking place in August for the community garage sale. And I think that's all I had tonight. Well, thank you. Trustee Barker. Thank you, Mayor. Um, two things. Uh, the first one, uh, Westmont First will meet again on uh, June 19th. Uh, that's a Monday at 6 p.m. at the library. And uh, we're still uh, promoting the uh, Blue Ribbon Project in support of our fine police officers here in town. And uh, those uh, ribbons are available. Um, that information is on the website. And uh, we thank you for all the support for that. And then prior to this meeting, we had a uh, community development committee meeting. And at that meeting, um, we covered a uh, wide range of topics uh, related to community development. Um, in the building division, um, we talked about uh, code enforcement and permits. And, um, you know, it was pointed out this evening that uh, there's been over five and a half million dollars in permitted activity so far this year, um, which is a pretty good pace. Um, so we're expecting good things. And then also in the engineering developer division, they are working with uh, the GIS program to incorporate that into all the things that the village has to do in the community. And then finally in the uh, planning division, um, we spent some time talking about a, a sign code uh, as we're reviewing this current sign code and updating all of that. And uh, there has been several public meetings to get input for that. Um, so that's been talked about a lot. And then excitingly, sometime this year, we're hoping that we can get some wayfinding signs out into the community to actually mark uh, Westmont, um, where the boundaries are as you enter the town. And uh, I just want to say the, the designs are beautiful, and uh, we're looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Little. Thank you, Mayor. I just have a couple of items. Our next administration committee meeting will be August 3rd at 430 in this room. Everyone's invited to come out and attend. Um, the next thing I wanted to let you know is that we are always in need of volunteers. We, at the Westmont Special Events, um, put on the cruise nights every Thursday night in the month of June, July, and August. And we would love to have people come out and give us an hour, give us two hours. Whatever you can afford to give us would be absolutely amazing. Um, the Taste of Westmont, we also need volunteers. If you can give us a commitment of just two hours for the whole weekend, that would be amazing. If you go onto our website and sign up, that would be awesome. Otherwise, you can call the Westmont Special Events Office and give them your name and information. The phone number at the office is 630-829-9378. So 
everybody can come out and um, really join us because it would be a great thing. And thank you, Jenny, for mentioning. Come on out. It's important. Thank you. <clears throat> thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Trustee Nero. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a few things. Uh, our next public safety committee meeting is July 6 at 430 right here in Village Hall. And uh, I'd like to f invite up uh, Deputy Chief Riley to talk about the kids safety camp, please. Thank you, Trustee Nero. I just want to remind everybody that the uh, fire department along with uh, the police department is holding the kids safety camp. We still have numerous openings for the June 20th and 21st class along with the August 1st and August 2nd class. It's for third through fifth grade students between the ages of eight and 10 years old. If you're interested, please contact the fire department. Uh, ask for Chris Hardy at 630-981-6400. It's a great camp and it's a good two days to get rid of your kids to bring them to the firehouse. So uh, we encourage everybody to try to have your children attend these classes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and the next I'd like to invite up uh, Police Chief Gunther to talk about upcoming squad car night. And their new jumpy house. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Trustee Nero. Uh, squad car night is a, a week from today, so we will have uh, lots of uh, squad cars in attendance along with uh, some other private owned vehicles. So. Uh, we will have the bounce house, we will have plenty of police officers on the street, and we will have the uh, uh, parade to end the uh, evening. So come on out, hopefully it'll be a great night. And uh, for the record, I will not be in town. Deputy Chief Gruen will be in charge, so look for him and give him a hard time in my absence. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, and then last, I just want to uh, thank John Yader for help coordinating our sixth year of doing the DuPage River Sweep here in Westmont. I was, uh, I was out there with him. We had about 20 volunteers that came. We, each year we clean up hundreds of pounds of garbage in St. Joseph's Creek. This year we focus kind of from Twin Legs Golf Course all the way down to 63rd Street. It's always an impactful event, and thanks to him for putting it together. It is a lot of work going to get all the supplies out in Naperville and coordinate all the volunteers, so appreciate him um, putting the effort in for that. And that's all I have, sir. Right, thank thank you. you. Trustee Barry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, our next Public Works Committee meeting will be uh, July 20th, and it is before our uh, village meeting here. Uh, right now they have the rain barrel program going on, and all the information is at the village website, and then also uh, downstairs they have handouts and an example. And I have nothing from the Environmental Improvement Commission, but I can assure you they have a lot in the fire. <laughs> so thank you, Mr. Mayor. Hi, thank you. Trustee Guzzo. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, a couple things. We had a Finance Committee meeting earlier, and we discussed places for eating tax. We also talked about there's some three hotel multiple grant requests tonight from the Park District for the summer <clears throat> musical, concerts in the park, the Haunted Forest. Then we also discussed the overview of our appropriations ordinance and timeline. Our public hearing for the appropriations ordinance will be 7-6. Anticipated adoption is scheduled for 7-6. Um, it must be approved and filed with the county by the end of July. There will be a draft ordinance available to the public currently at the Village Hall on 621, there or after 621. And then moving on for bonds, we are currently in the process of doing bonds for stormwater infrastructure improvements. Those bonds are going to be financed by the sales tax that was passed a few years ago for stormwater management. Um, there will be a public hearing on the bonds scheduled for July 20th, so I just wanted to bring that date to everyone's attention. And then last but not least, I was very fortunate last month to attend Where Have the Monarchs Gone? It was a talk at the library, and it was presented by Pat Miller, who's a conservation specialist. And I just want to tell everybody it was a great talk. When you think about where have the butterflies gone? Um, growing up, you always saw the monarchs and everything, and a lot of the issues are that the monarchs have no feeding. All the milkweed plants have kind of gone by the wayside. Um, so we got some really great handouts and invite a monarch to launch so you plant some milkweed and i can tell you we have milkweed in the back ready to be planted so if anybody's interested monarch way stations are plants that bring the monarchs in so they can feed and if anybody's interested on the information they can go to monarchwatch.org but i want to thank i believe it was the environmental improvement commission in the library for putting the talk on it was great so um yes i'm hoping to get some monarchs in to come and have lunch at my house <laughs> thank you mayor <Mara. laughs> trustee eddington uh, a couple of things um 
we'll go through them as I'll go through my two quickly the other one will take a little longer um, schools out so again as I mentioned last time I think all the schools are now finished for summer please watch our children because they're in the streets and in the parks and riding their bikes and everything else so uh, we want to be careful of them and uh, of course we had a, we had a a mostly successful barbecue Friday because of the rain of course was kind of a uh, a lost day unfortunately but then Saturday and Sunday turned out to be absolutely super we had a great again another great contest almost um, 60 pro teams and I think we had 42 amateur teams so we still had a, a very good contest but we also had two great days of weather and um, those that attended we had several thousand people who of course came this is the time to let us know if you have any suggestions it's fresh in your minds those that attended so uh, please let any of the Lions Club members know um, if there's any suggestions for the future for us to keep making it better it continues to grow and uh, but we need to hear from the general public on what they'd like to see and do so uh, and that's all I have except that I would like to invite uh, Jill Ziegler and Larry Forsberg up to the podium because we have had several economic development meetings over the, the spring and winter and have had multiple presenters at several of the meetings sometimes as many as three and but all this stuff is now in the works so we thought it might be nice for us to um, kind of give everybody a heads up on on what's happening so I'm going to turn the floor over to them well, what you've got in front of you is a list of uh, projects uh, there are new businesses that have opened <laughs> uh, projects that are underway uh, residential overview um, you can see in the projects underway there's a couple of multi-million dollar projects a couple were mentioned earlier in the community development uh, meeting with the kickoff of BMW and Porsche um, so we want to make sure that we're giving the board uh, current information as to what's going on and you'll see this coming to you each and every month going forward. Um, as we briefly mentioned in Community Development Committee, we had 158 uh, permits in May and 447 for the year. That includes residential and commercial. Um, we, uh, and we had four, $4 million worth of construction value in May alone. And so far this year, as Trustee Barker mentioned, we've had about five and a half million um, just in 2017 in comparison to eight million over uh, 2016. And as uh, Larry mentioned, we also have uh, several large uh, building permits coming up shortly. So um, we are expecting the same to continue with uh, newer projects coming in this fall. Any particular questions on any projects or anything related? No, well done, this is very useful. We, we, we talked you. about communicating and this is it, exactly what we're looking for. And this really doesn't include uh, a presentation that that uh, some of you have seen and I think is going through the works right now with the purchase of the property up on Pasquale Drive uh, by Ryan. And uh, they haven't disclosed yet who they've got tapped to come in, but that's a that's a huge project that is supposed to, what, 150 jobs? Yes, uh, this is uh, Oakmont Point, over, um, which is the former Serva building at 700 Oakmont off Pasconelli. Um, so we're expecting um, a huge expansion over there with increased parking. Um, they're going to re-landscape the entire site. Uh, it'll be a Class A facility for a um, headquarters. So we're excited to hear who the tenant will be. So again, a lot going on. Now the culmination of the meetings and planning and zoning and everything else is coming to fruition with with the people working and getting and getting things started so uh, we thought this was a good time to bring all of this to you so you can see that they're busy there are additional discussions going on and we look forward to adding items to this list on a regular basis yeah thank you very, thank very you much. thank you all right, that's that's it, all right moving on um, Consent agenda. Does any board member have any item they'd like to be removed? Steve, uh, would we want to remove the 
the Angel Heaven Haven. An Angel Haven Foundation yeah. request on the consent agenda, and the can, applicant is here. I can describe it during the consent agenda, why or why don't we just uh, describe it, and then we'll allow her the opportunity to come up and talk about sure. it. Let's do it that way. So we'll leave it on the agenda. If not, then I'll ask um, on the consent agenda. I'll ask Manager May to read the consent agenda. Thank you. First item on the consent agenda are village board meeting minutes. Board to consider approving the minutes of the village board meeting held May 25th, 2017. Next is finance ordinance number three in the amount of $1,033,541.79. It's followed by the April financial report. Board to consider a motion to accept the financial report submitted for the month of April, 2017. We have purchase orders next. First purchase order, Atlas Bobcat, $53,536. Uh, that's the name of the company, but it is for the compact excavator that uh, was budgeted for this year. Second purchase order, Twin Supplies, $20,787.46. As reference to the LED streetlight project, and those uh, costs are offset by uh, grant revenue. Next, LNR Construction. Company, $930,679. This is the open purchase order for the Naperville and Warwick stormwater project that you previously approved the contract for. Uh, similarly, the next purchase order is for RW Dunham & Company, $795,578.03. Also a purchase order for a construction contract. This one for East Richmond water main and resurfacing project uh, that was previously awarded. The total of the purchase orders is $1,800,580.49, brings the total of purchase orders and finance ordinance number three to $2,834,122.28. Next is a hotel motel grant request. The next three are hotel motel grant requests for the park district. First one is for concerts in the park. Board to consider a motion awarding Hotel Moto grant request in the amount of $2,500 to Westmont Park District for concerts in the park events. Second event is Haunted Forest. Board to consider a motion awarding the Hotel Motel grant request in the amount of $2,500 to the Westmont Park District for the Haunted Forest event. Next is Summer Musicals. Board to consider a motion awarding Hotel Motel grant request in the amount of $2,500 to the Westmont Park District for the performance of summer musicals. And um, we talked about at the uh, Finance Committee meeting, uh, the balance of that, these are all budgeted uh, and expended, uh, expected requests, and that leaves the balance of that fund at $5,000 if uh, approved. Last on the consent agenda is one uh, community event. Uh, it's the Angel Haven Foundation benefit sale. Board to consider an ordinance approving the following requests from Angel Haven Foundation, a non not for profit corporation, for their annual fundraising yard sale. There are five items. First is the approval of a four day yard sale at 213 East 55th Street from June 22nd to June 25th from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. The, the next four are waivers of fees. Uh, First, the tent permit fee, then the village's loan to truck program fee, garage sale permit fee, and lastly, the waiver of costs for the temporary sign banner uh, permit. Uh, all that together concludes the consent agenda. Do, do I have a motion to approve as presented? Motion by Addington to approve. Second by Little. Motion be made and second. Would you like to come to the podium on the question and uh, remind us what you do with your benefit? what I do again. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Barbara Roos and I am a director of the Angel Haven Foundation. This is our 17th year of having our benefit sale and the sale runs from June 22nd through June 25th at the West Hills Community Church lot. Uh, Thursday through Saturday our hours are 9 to 6. Sunday they're from 12 till we get tired. <laughs> um, our sale is based on 
people donating items to us throughout the year. And it's everything you have in your own home. The items that we do not send down to our 200 families in the Appalachia Mountains of Virginia is what you see at our sale. Because there is, without exaggerating, 50,000 items or more, we don't take the time to tag anything. We just ask that people come and take what they'd like and leave a reasonable donation to us. And then we use that money from the sale to purchase food for these families because we get everything donated throughout the year except food. So it all kind of comes full circle, no matter whether it goes down there or it's in our, our sale. We have everything from medical equipment to furniture to clothing to toys. Uh, everything is under tents for inclement weather. If you need to fertilize your lawn, just wait for our sale because I guarantee it's going to rain. Gonna rain. Uh, <laughs> if you would like to donate anything, uh, at this point, I would like to request that you bring it to the sale site. I currently have three 10 by 20 storage units, a two car garage, a house that's busting at the seams. <laughs> so I can't, at this point, go and pick anything else up. But you are more than welcome to drop it off. You will be given a tax receipt. We are tax deductible. We are also looking for volunteers that week of the sale to come and help put things out. Uh, it's just basically taking things out of boxes, putting it out on the tables, organizing it, um, getting it ready for our Thursday morning open. Any questions? I think everything's the same it's been. Same as it was last year. And the year before that? Yeah, and the year before that, and the year before that. This is our 17th year with the foundation. Do Hopefully you the weather. You to do it out of her home? Yeah. I did. Yeah. Do you have a phone number where people can yes. reach you to volunteer? Uh, my phone number is 630-971-1842. Just leave me a message. If I don't get back to you right away, please be patient, I will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my phone is ringing off the hook. And at this point, I'm actually turning down donations. They have to wait and bring it to the sale because I there's just no place else to put it, <laughs> which is good, which is very good. Well, good luck. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other questions or comments? This question on the hotel motel uh, grant. You said that there's five thousand dollars. <throat> excuse me, five thousand dollars left. If these uh, all approved, there'll be five thousand dollars left in the fund. And that is just for the, the annual year fund? There, there's more of a, of a reserve there also? Oh, yes. The, just that was set aside in that budget account for specifically for grant requests for? For this budgeted year? Yes. Just for the budget. Okay, very well. Okay. Thank you for that. And whatever is not used will go back into the reserve. Because I thought somewhere along the line we lost some money somewhere. But <laughs> it's that still makes more there, sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any additional comments? Not roll call, please. Trustee Addington? Yes. Trustee Barry? Yes. Trustee Little? Yes. Trustee Barker? Yes. Trustee Guzzo? Yes. Trustee Nero? Yes. All right, moving on to new business, a 59th and Williams, a tax deed purchase. Board to consider an ordinance approving the following actions related to the acquisition of property located at 59th Street and Williams Street. One, approving the mayor's appointment of Lynette Lockwitz of Reader Law Offices LTD, a special counsel for the village for the limited purpose of obtaining a tax deed to the said property, and two, approving a certificate of sale agreement to enable the village to purchase said property via a tax deed. And I'd ask uh, Attorney Zemanek or Manager May or Director Ziegler all if they can comment on this one. Uh, this is vacant property at 59th and Williams. It was discussed previously with the board uh, about the fact that this property was available for purchase by the village. Uh, the back taxes for the past three years were unpaid and were <clears throat> unpaid by the underlying property owner. A company came in, paid those back taxes, petitioned the court for a deed uh, because the back taxes were not claimed or paid off by the original owner. Um, the county reached out to the village and said, hey, you might be interested in this property. It's in a floodplain, it's unbuildable. The 
person, the company that bought the back taxes realized the property had no value to them, so was willing to transfer their rights to the village to obtain the tax deed. So from a cost perspective, the village would be paying the exact amount of back taxes that this company paid, $20,811.03 to obtain ownership to this property, which will serve as valuable stormwater management uh, for the village will remain vacant. Uh, in addition, this att attorney is the attorney who is representing the company that paid the back taxes, initiated the court proceedings, offered to come on board to help the village finalize this process because she's a specialist in tax deed purchases. The fee for her is $500, and then there's about $60 in recording the deed, et cetera. Two. One motion. Uh, one motion, yes. Motion to approve. Nero. Second, Barry. Motion made and second to approve. On the question. <coughs> Trustee Addington. This was going to be a church at one time. Was it really? They, they, this goes back to when Frank Valerie was still mayor. The property came up and, matter of fact, I got um, admonished by Pete Zamus because I started to ask economic questions about the benefits of the village. And Peter said, oh, you can ask those kind of questions. It's a church. Floating church. <laughs> <laughs> but then they ran into the, storm what you just problem. heard, they ran into the stormwater problems. Floodplain, yeah. Or floodplain, floodplain yeah. So 100%. And, so, and then they, they not walked. not buildable. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So this has sat there vacant yeah. for a long, long time and, and uh, uh, for the price. Yeah. Great acquisition for the village. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was glad to see that everyone from when we talked about it followed through because this is this is probably one of the greatest things that's really happened. Yes. I mean, it, it's a, it's an eyesore, it's a that's floodplain, right. mm -hmm. and it's tied into our parks. I mean, it's this is a really good deal for us. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Any other comments? Anybody seeing none? Roll call, please. Trustee Nero. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Parker. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Barry. Yes. Yes. Motion passes. New business B, 701 Blackhawk Drive. Do you store it? Board to consider an ordinance approving a commercial masonry waiver request from you store it self storage in the M manufacturing district. And I've got Director Ziegler to provide some more information. Thank you, Mayor. You store it is here tonight to request a waiver to construct a non-masonry facade uh, to their exterior wall. They're going to replace uh, 30 feet of brick with glass on the south elevation and 90 feet of brick with glass on the west elevation. Uh, as discussed at CDC this afternoon, uh, staff will work on a text amendment to recommend this waiver be handled ad administratively in conjunction with the fire department in the future. Uh, we recommend approval and the fire department uh, has included a memo in your packet that stated that the fire rating is maintained and that they're comfortable with the request as well. I'm available for any questions. So I have a motion. Motion to approve. Little. Second. Guzzo. Motion made and second to approve on the question. Yeah, I just, I, uh, I wanted to just say that, um, you know, the, the brick, um, Facade was something that was, you know, the call it older style construction and glass and steel is more contemporary and modern. You see it going up all over. So, why it might be unique to that spot right now in the future, it won't be. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from the audience? Anybody who owns the business want to say anything? I opened the door for you. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor and Trustees. Um, Peter Knorr, I'm uh, Vice President of Ustort. Um, we're a family-run business. Uh, this, is, this will be our 10th property. Um, it's me and my father. He started back in uh, 1987. Uh, we're really excited to be in Westmont and uh, just recently opened the property off of Route 83 in Elmhurst. Uh, if you're ever driving by, it's, uh, it's a nice property and uh, we expect that this one will be uh, very, uh, very much quality project. So. There are all 10 of your locations in Illinois? Uh, we have some in San Diego. San Diego also. Mm -hmm. The facility on 83 is beautiful. I've, I've watched that construction go on. It's really a nice place. Thank you. I appreciate it. So um, Jill has been very helpful, and Larry and Larry Kaufman. And we've had a couple of meetings uh, sort of going through the village when we were uh, acquiring it from the uh, Julian brothers. And uh, they've been a great help, and glad to be here. Did you purchase the building from them? Uh, yes. Any comments, questions? Uh, 
have a roll call? No? Did I have a motion? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I'll have a roll call. Trustee Little? Yes. Trustee Berry? Yes. Trustee Addington? Yes. Trustee Nero? Yes. Trustee Guzzo? Yes. Trustee Park? Okay, yes. The waiver request was approved. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. New business C. Uh, declare items as surf plus equipment. Uh, board to consider an ordinance to declare fire department hose and radio equipment as surplus property. And I've got Deputy Chief Riley. Thank you, Mayor. The property is identified in the attachment has outlived its useful life and is outdated, non-functioning, or otherwise economically not maintainable. The equipment will be sold, donated, or scrapped as appropriate. This property, upon being declared surplus and disposed of, will be removed from the village property inventory. And just for the hose, I've spoke with Director Ramsey, and um, I'm sure he could use a few lengths of hose. We have about 81 lengths of hose, that's 20 years plus. Uh, plus we have numerous radios back from the police department that we got handed to us that we'd like to uh, declare a surplus. Those are no longer um, programmable or narrow banding, so those radios to us are no good, but we will be giving some of those to EMA to use for street fair or some of their... Uh, Functions that, was, that yeah, they going to be one of my questions for, for uh, you guys. And even, if, even for us at the barbecue, would they be available? Yes, sir. And, and of any use to us? Because I know we rent um, uh, communications right now. Maybe those would be available. Yeah, I mean, they are um, probably about 20 years or old or so, but they are uh, HT 750 radios. They are uh, VHF style radios that we certainly could program to. Okay. To your liking also but right now fire department with the narrow banding in the county and the starcom radio fire department really doesn't have any use along with police submit department. a bid jim there you, there you go, go. <laughs> there you go motion to approve nero <laughs> second little motion to be made and second to approve any additional comments questions roll call please trustee nero yes trustee barry yes trustee little yes trustee parker Yes. Trustee Guzzo? Yes. Trustee Ed? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, new business D, the prevailing wage in DuPage County. Board to consider an ordinance to ascertain the prevailing wages as defined in said act. This is an annual event, and I'd ask Manager May to provide some additional information. The, uh, essentially, this is law uh, requiring our approval of this. Uh, the, the law itself requires that we what's called ascertain the prevailing wages uh, as defined in the law as published by DuPage County for us. For laborers, mechanics, and other workers in the locality of the village who are employed or contracted in performing construction of public works. Uh, not only do we have to follow the prevailing wage, you, you have to pass an ordinance stating that you intend to uh, follow the prevailing wage act. And we do do this every year. Yeah. Um. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve, Barry. Second, Nero. Motion made and second on the question. The only question I would have, and this has come up with another public body, um, what if you don't pass it? State would hold your funds or? You know, I, I looked at this once upon a time because another community asked me that exact same question. It says that the village shall pass. The, uh, adopt a prevailing wage ordinance. So it's mandatory to do it, but there's no penalty provision that I recall. So it's, cur it's interesting. And if you look at the last available prevailing wages that the state published, it goes technically through DuPage County. It's stated July of 2015. So the state hasn't updated the information since then because they have more important things to do. You know, it, the, the prevailing wage is, is an interesting thing because it, it goes back really to the first Mayor Daley. And it's somewhat unfair when it becomes to municipalities because the whole idea of prevailing wage is you were usually seasonal and you usually weren't guaranteed 40 hours a week. Well, municipalities do get that 40 hours a week. So really, the original Mayor Daley threw prevailing wage off for the whole state. You know, where, again, if you only worked six months out of the, out of the year, you were supposed to get more money to, to, to equal that out. Whereas prevailing wage for, let's say, a mechanic here, he's going to get his 40 hours. So it's one of those things that the history of prevailing wage in Illinois is, is a little skewed, in my opinion. <laughs> but it's, it's here to stay now. You know. but, uh, 
Well, do any other comments or questions? Uh, I'd ask for a roll call, please. Trustee Barry. Yes. Trustee Nero. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Addington. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Motion passes. Uh, new business E. Public comment procedures. Board to consider ordinance approving procedures for public comment at all public meetings of village boards, commissions, and committees. And we've been working on this for a while now, and Attorney Zemanak has prepared it, and I ask him to comment on it. Uh, it was emailed to you yesterday in the packet of ordinances. Hopefully you all had a chance to see it. It's a one-page, two-page exhibit uh, to the ordinance. Um, these are real basic public comment rules. We kind of scoured what other municipalities had adopted from time to time and cobbled together the best provisions and put them into a policy. Uh, currently, on the front of your agendas every meeting, there's a kind of a statement as to some of what the policy is, such as a three-minute time limit, but that was never formally adopted by, by ordinance. So we decided to put it into an ordinance form. We can have the, uh, the procedures, which is the exhibit to the ordinance, on the desk out front so the public is, is aware of it, and we can replace this language on the agenda if this is approved moving forward just to say um, participants shall follow the procedures for public participation as adopted by the Village of Westmont. Do I have a motion? So, no. 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 Move Guzzo. <laughs> second, Nero. Motion made and seconded. Um, <laughs> Trustee Eddington, on the question. Yeah, uh, believe it or not, I didn't get them yesterday, which is, oh. So the only, well, they ignore me anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, um, this doesn't change like we just had with the guy from you store it that they talk I know there are some communities who have restricted either you talk in front of the meeting and they're not allowed to talk when their item is on the agenda this we're is not, not restrict we're that. not restricting that the current policies and procedures are going to basically remain in effect this just codifies it's three minutes when you're up there speaking mayor has the right to call up people for agenda items when they occur um, if you're speaking for a group, you can have up to six minutes, uh, refrain from obscene language, et cetera, et cetera, and you can be removed from a meeting, things like that. Put it, we just reduced it finally into a, a document that people can follow. Yeah. Whether they do or not is a different story. Well, yes. we've, been, we've been governed supposedly by the three minute rule forever, yeah, and it's know. never been, well, I haven't enforced it since I've been. Maybe Frank put that into effect with Joe D'Amico. Oh. It doesn't go for trustees, though, right? Yeah, no, trustees. <laughs> Maybe it should. <laughs> yeah. That's a two-minute rule. You can restrict me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's hurry up and vote on that. Is that Mayor, anything included? I have a question. Yeah, trustee Barker. But I, I still have a little issue with the lady that came and talked about the candle in the refrigerator. Yes. Yeah, that went on a little bit longer than three minutes. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I. Um, that's probably the one I, I should have. Yeah. Tried to speed her along but I probably should have been so the, the my question would be is it, it always bothers me that you know the the people that testify under planning and zoning are under oath but when they come here and they talk to the board under open forum they're not under oath but people take what they say yep. as truth or fact or that they are under oath is there any statement that we can make to say this is the opinion of a particular person because I see there's value in that, that, you know, if you hear it at the board meeting and you heard it on tape, it must be a fact, and they can, they're really free to come up there and say whatever they want. Mm -hmm. We certainly can add that, that any statements made are opinions of the you individual see value in that, speaker. Don't, you know? No, I, personally, I think having sat through these enough, I think it's pretty self-evident when someone comes up and says, I'd like to talk to you about X, Y, or Z, and explains their position. Um, one, you guys don't have to respond to their comments or questions here, and that's what this says. Right. And two, that they're expressing a concern or an opinion, and that's all it is. Um, if there's validity to it, then maybe you guys would consider it as subsequent action, but, uh, you know. Well, or, or the American say, thank you for your opinion. Right, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I do know that that the chairman of our planning and zoning board has expressed that same frustration in the fact that they'll say one thing in front of them because they've been under oath and they'll come here and say something completely different and probably the best example was when we were looking at that that animal hospital thing I mean they, they stand there and said all kinds of things against the potential uh, new developer or new owner that wanted to come in and half of it wasn't even true right if they never said at planning and zoning because they were under oath and they're not here and, and that's one of the times when you have conflicting testimony like that or, or someone trying to introduce new evidence where you can call out a member of the public and say you know that those comments weren't made at the public hearing process and you know it's you're not under oath now and we're we're not going to consider these comments yeah that's a good point thank you I okay. guess that's just a yeah. well, no, a it point. always runs across your mind that they can say what they want right and we understand that yeah but not everybody understands yeah. it <clears throat> and you're right saying somebody saying something different or um, just because they heard it it must be true yeah that's right yeah, it happened at the board meeting. It's like yeah. the internet. When you yeah, it, it's exactly. got to be true. Oh, I saw it there, so it must be true. Well, that isn't the case. No. Any additional comments? Questions? Yeah. Yeah. You're ready to, for the roll call, please. Trustee Guzzo? Yes. Trustee Addington? Yes. Trustee Little? Yes. Trustee Parker? Yes. Trustee Nero? Yes. Trustee Barry? Yes. Miscellaneous. Anybody got anything to add other than um, you'll see them on the street in about five minutes? Uh, I only want to add that the garage sales, community <coughs> garage sale, is <coughs> fifth and sixth. They've added Sunday to it. And also, we will not have a public information committee meeting on June 22nd. And the one thing I do want to caution everyone is <coughs> talking about the butterflies. And there was a company that was soliciting here in town that would kill <coughs> insects and spiders and everything. And at that point, I had just planted a butterfly bush. And I said, well, what about butterflies? Well, yeah, it'll kill them, too. And I said, well, then I wouldn't <coughs> want to stop because yeah, I'm right. trying to save the monarchs. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, so plant that milkweed. Yeah. <laughs> and be careful with anybody coming around wanting to. And, and just to piggyback on, on Jenny's comments, uh, you know, Lisa Madigan's office recommends their number two thing they recommend is to never hire somebody when they come to your door unsolicited. Uh -huh. So if, if, you know, to watch all these people that are coming door to door is, I heard a friend who signed up with that exterminating uh -huh. business, and I was taken back that you signed up with somebody who came to your door like that. I was worried because the person just north of me did. He told, the salesman told me, and I'm thinking, that'll kill my butterflies too. <laughs> Good message for everyone. Anybody in the audience, would we forget anything? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, Little? Second, Nero. Motion made and second to adjourn. I ask for roll call, please. Trustee Little? Yes. Trustee Barry? Yes. Trustee Addington? Yes. Trustee Nero? Yes. Trustee Guzzo? Yes. Trustee Barker. Okay. Yes. I'd like to thank everybody for coming, and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.